Hey guys, today I'm going to be assembling and showing you how to build your fuel lines. Now all my lines and fittings are straight from Hot Rod Fuel Hose. Check them out on Facebook and their website, hotrodfuelhose.com. Uh, but I'm going to be building you some blue nylon hose that's braided and has the plastic, I guess you would call it, inner hose. Uh, they're not too hard to build. It's a little bit harder just doing the stainless than it is just the uh, nylon. That it's, it's actually a nylon braid over stainless over the hose itself. So I'm going to be showing you right here in a second. Okay, so here's the blue nylon hose. This is the uh, regular braided. And there's also some red braided and black they sell different colored ends. This is just the regular red and blue. There you go. Uh, this is a 90 degree which I just I'm going to use it because I don't need a 90 degree end. Now the ways you can cut this is you want to take a thin uh, small little piece like just enough to touch on both ends when you wrap the hose before you cut it either using, uh, they sell specialty cutter pliers or you can use a cutoff wheel. Now this one's already been cut. I can just put the end on regular so that's what I'm gonna do. All you need to do really is just, you know, get a firm grip on it if there's any problems and then just push your end on. Now these go on real easy on the nylon because they slide. The stainless tends to want to grip them quite a bit so you gotta have to watch out for that but you can get them on it just takes a little bit more effort well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push mine back far because what you have to do is you have to pull back the nylon about a quarter inch and the stainless about a quarter inch and I tend to use a pick when I do it because this stuff can be really sharp and can leave your fingers full of holes that just does not feel good so I'm just pulling back the nylon. Now you can use a pair of scissors and trim off the nylon if you can get it off, which mine's being difficult right now. All right, so just basically any way you can get that nylon off there where you have access to the stainless because the stainless actually has to get pulled back to to where you can put the ferrule in which is what this is the ferrule and how it goes is the it's beveled inward and that always goes downward into the nut so that way when you put it on it squishes this and squeeze it tight now these have a little stopper on the inside so it goes over the plastic hose. I'll show you that when I get to that point. But for now, just gotta keep pulling back all of this nylon. And again, it can get you. I actually get quite a bit of uh, bloody fingers doing it, so. It's kind of like a wire wheel, you know how you always get caught by them. So, just peel that back. got it here but anyway now that you know what you gotta do you gotta peel back the nylon and then the stainless and cut it down about a quarter of an inch I'm gonna do that I'll cut you back on so after you get that all slid back and you get your braided frayed open enough to where you can slide your ferrule over the hose so just take your time that hose can get a little wonky on you, so you gotta watch it. And basically, once you get it in there, just give it a little push to where it slides on. There we go. I'm all the way up now. So the next part, all you gotta do now, just slide your fitting in. Of course, it's gonna be a little tough. 
a little bit tougher than I believe I thought it was going to be. That little edge rolled over on me. My fault. Just got to roll it back around. It's good for the pick to use to roll it back into where it needs to be. it's all the way up you just slide your this is basically like a jam nut but you slide it all the way up get it started all right now you're basically done now what I'm gonna do so I don't mar it or scratch it up I'm gonna put some tape on it now you don't have to tape it I just do because I'm super anal about having you know the look everybody else is like who cares about the look as long as my car gets gas but trying to do everything nice and clean again one layer of tape make sure it's not going to get in your threads on both sides of both of the the 90 and the feral thing the feral side should I say not the feral thing make sure you don't have any tape in the thread area now you can do uh, two wrenches or if you have a vise you can put it in the vise and lock it down but I'm just going to use a wrench which What I had the duct tape on there for is to do the same thing, but the duct tape sort of wants to, it's too thick, so it wants to hold it from going all the way on. So don't put duct tape on it. And it fits right on. Then you just take your other wrench, which I think I gotta get a different one. Yeah, I'm gonna get another three quarter. But basically all you do is once you have it is you just tighten it down. Use two wrenches, it's the best way. But I'll show you after I get it all done. So, after you're done, fuel line's ready to go, ready to be installed. Really good, nice, tight fit. Oh, you never pull that off. Good to go. Everything still swivels good and free here. It's still tight, so that way you don't gotta worry about it being just like flopping around. It's still got some stiffness to it. To where if you set it and you want it to stay right there, it'll stay right there. I believe there's. I believe it's a really good product. It's a hot rod fuel hose. And when I do my car, it's going to be all black with red hose ends for the uh, LS swap. Check out other videos of mine, and remember, check out Hot Rod Fuel Hose. They have everything you need, the adapters, the straights, the 90s, 45s, uh, 180s, like this one. And they're pretty easy to assemble. Thanks for watching.